Over the last couple of years, desktop resin 3D printers have gained a ton of popularity, and this is attributed to the price continuing to go down, the software and hardware getting better, the resins also continuing to evolve, and the resin 3D printer's ability to capture just the most insane level of detail that you just can't get with an FDM or extrusion-based 3D printer. And originally, all of the resin 3D printers primarily that were available in the desktop space had a really small build volume, but also similar to the way FDM machines have gone, they are now available in much larger sizes. This really has helped to open up the capabilities of these resin 3D printers because now they can be used to print out larger parts and they can also be used to batch print parts. I've mentioned quite a few times that with extrusion based 3D printers, I feel like large batch printing can be quite risky while Almost all of the resin printing batches that I've thrown at various machines has been successful. On this channel so far, we've covered a couple of those mid to larger range resin 3D printers, and I've been wanting to test out one of the Epax resin 3D printers for quite some time now, actually, ever since I saw Uncle Jesse, and he did a review on the Epax X10, which was about a year ago now. Since then, in quite a few of my resin 3D printer reviews, I've had a lot of people asking me what I think about the Epax printers, but I haven't had really much feedback since I'd never gotten a chance to test one. So I was super excited when Epax did reach out to me asking if I wanted to test out their E10 printer. Now, the E10 is a 4K resin 3D printer that was released in the last year, and they recently announced a 5K upgrade to this printer, which is absolutely insane. Epax did send me one of the E10 5K variants, and so over the last couple of weeks, I've been testing it out and doing some printing, and today I'm going to share that with you. So in today's video, we will talk about the printer specs. I'll talk about the differences between the 4K and the 5K variant. We'll go over what setup looks like. I will show you some of the prints, and of course, I will give you my final opinion on this printer, at least so far. I am really excited to show you guys what this printer is all about. So without further ado, let's get right to today's video. Massive thanks to Thanks for sponsoring today's video. With over 2 million index models in their database and growing regularly, Thanks finds the exact model that you're looking for. Thanks has some pretty unique features, like the ability to perform a geometric search or the recently added AR mode that I love. I'm a very visual person, and having the ability to place a 3D model in your space before actually printing it for reference can be quite useful. Also, it's a lot of fun and can make for some great photos. There are also great collaboration functionality baked right in, like the ability to create a private team for working on projects, where you can keep track of things like different model versions as well as revisions. You also have the ability to follow a user's project, which is great for any that are actively being updated. Things has been developing new features for their site constantly, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this platform continue to expand. Links will be in the description so that you can find out more and check out things for yourself. Starting off, let's run through the specs of this printer. The E10 4K features a 4K 8.9 inch monochrome LCD screen, which gives you a build volume of 192 by 120 by 250 millimeters, while the upgraded E10 5K has a 5K 10.1 inch screen, giving you a build volume of 221 by 129 by 250 millimeters. Since the resolution of an MSLA printer is dictated by the LCD screen that is creating the mask, the upgrade to the 5K LCD screen will allow you to print larger without losing any of that high detail. EPAC states that it is a 20% increase in print volume, so bumping from the 4K to 5K screen will actually increase both the print volume as well as your print resolution. The awesome thing is, is that EPAC's made it where if you get the 4K E10 version, because that's all that you feel like you need or want right now, you can decide later on should you want to upgrade it to the 5K variant. Everything else between the E10 4K and the E10 5K are going to be identical. The E10 is constructed primarily using a combination of aluminum as well as injection molded plastic and the machine does have some weight to it. The vat is injection molded and Epax does sell replacement vats in case you want to have multiple if you're swapping quickly between different resins and don't want to have to drain and clean, that is a really nice option to have. There's not a max fill line really built into the vat, but Epax did let me know that the sort of indent in the vat is what is recommended to be used as far as the resin level goes. The E10 uses Epax's special NFEP, which is slightly different than the standard FEP. The main benefit of this is less suction force, which should help preventing the parts from pulling off of the build plate or causing any deformation of prints. It did work really well in my testing and I had absolutely no issues with too much sticking. The build plate is aluminum on the bottom and is encased in injection molded plastic. I did go ahead and tighten this and apply some force on the top to see 
if there was any flex and there was a little bit but no more than really any of the other resin printers that I've used and it's definitely not going to be a problem when actually uh, using the resin 3d printer under normal operations that build plate slides up and down on two fairly beefy linear rails and a lead screw the E10 comes standard with a lid that lifts completely off. However, if you do prefer to have a lid that stays on, that has a door that opens and closes from the front, they do sell an upgrade kit for that. Personally, I really prefer the lid that comes off entirely. It just makes it a lot easier to get in there and kind of work with the build plate. Everything's just a lot more accessible, but that might come down to personal preference. So if you do decide that that's what you prefer, that is an option for this machine. For interfacing with the printer, there is a three and a half inch touchscreen on the front of the machine. On the right hand side, you'll find a USB port as well as an ethernet port and an on and off switch. Finally, on the back of the machine, you will find the power jack for the power supply. There are vents and fans on both the left and right side of the machine, which is to help with the heat generated from the LED uh, light source, as well as the LCD screen. And for the size of this machine, I was pleasantly surprised that the fans were not incredibly noisy. They do produce some sound, but really, nothing that's too crazy. Unlike on FDM printers, usually when I'm reviewing resin printers, I don't actually pop the hood on them. But in this instance, I did want to take a look at what was inside of this machine very quickly. So I did lay the machine on its back and take off the bottom panel. Inside, I found the Chitu Systems LE1 series board powering the E10. There's also a separate MOSFET board that is used to power or control the LEDs on and off. Other than that, there's a massive heat sink to help pulling heat away from the LEDs and LCD screen and a large fan attached to it. The E10 came packaged very well. It was inside a box that was inside another box that was completely encased in foam. And like I said, this machine does have a bit of weight to it. I probably should have just cut the box completely open, but luckily I had Aaron who was here to help me just kind of team lift it out of the uh, box and onto my workstation. I definitely think a single person can lift it, but just the shape of the box was a little bit awkward. So having a, uh, a partner to help lift it out of the box was definitely nice. As far as setup goes, I was a little bit surprised to find that there was no manual instructions included with the printer or anything on the flash drive. On the actual product page for the 5K, it does state that there will be both a guide on the product page as well as on the YouTube channel by the time the 5K is shipping, which based off of the dates on their website is going to be in the next month. So that should be av uh, available very soon here. I also did reach out to the team just to ask about some kind of a paper manual to be included with the printer and they did let me know they are working on some form of a quick start guide that will be available shortly and will also begin to ship with the printers. Uh, before even getting a response from them though, I did just go ahead and most every resin 3D printer that I've used has had a near identical setup process. So I just went and it did exactly what I would do with any other machine, which is basically to remove the vat, loosen the screws on the side of the build plate, put a piece of printer paper down on where the LCD screen is, home the printer, and then hold the build plate in place while tightening those four screws again. So I went ahead and did that. And uh, I am happy to announce that that worked successfully. So there's nothing special that needs to be done as far as the setup goes. It's going to be just like any other resin printer. Epax did send me a new version of Chitu Box that isn't publicly available yet, as well as a code to allow me to access it. Basically, the main difference that this Chitu Box has is that it has the profile for the 5K print, uh, printer built in. And Uncle Jesse actually released a very interesting video recently talking about um, certain printers with a concern that machines that were using the Chitu board would be forced to buy into Chitu Boxes pro version, which is a yearly paid subscription service. And it seemed like Chitu Box had kind of explained that that's not going to be the case and that they are going to have the free version available. But I did reach out to Epax just to kind of get some clarity on that. And they let me know that all of their machines are going to be usable with the free version. And anyone that purchases this machine will get um, you know, a code for the free version, or you'll just be able to download it. Of course, if you do want the pro version and the features it has, you can certainly go that route, but you're not gonna be forced to purchase the Chitu Box Pro in order to be able to use this. It's going to work with the free version as well. And I was really happy to hear that. Ready to print, Chelsea from Chaos Core Tech had just announced a few days ago that she'd released a new model on things of Lola Bunny from Space Jam, which I knew I wanted to print. I'll place links down below in the description of this model, as well as all the other models I use in this video, in case you want to check them out or print them for yourself. I went ahead and imported it into Chichi Box and I rotated it as well as added some supports. I was debating on trying to hollow it out to save a little bit of resin, but I really wanted it to be sturdy, so I kept it solid. Epex was awesome enough to send over a couple bottles of their gray hard resin, so I filled up the vat with that. 
Normally I'd run a small test print just to make sure that everything was working correctly. But since again, there was nothing included on the flash drive, I decided just to sort of full send it and do a fairly large, I believe in this instance, it was roughly an eight hour print. Around eight hours later, I had an amazing looking print hanging from the build plate. I was pleasantly surprised to find that the model, although stuck plenty well, was not too difficult to scrape off of the build plate and into my tub of IPA. Running the medium default support settings in Chichibox has proven to be really successful for me in the past, and so that is what I ran on this, and they were a piece of cake to remove by hand. And it's been crazy hot here in Southern California lately, so although I do have a number of various UV curing sources, I just put this thing out in the sun for 15 minutes and it did the trick and the part was completely cleaned and cured. A couple of weeks ago, I printed out a few models from MZ4250 over on Things, and I was super excited to see that he had uploaded a ton of new models. I started off with the female leash model that I downloaded and scaled up to 200%. After rotating and adding supports, I printed this out and it also turned out absolutely awesome. And looking through his models, there was so many that he had uploaded that I decided I wanted to just print out a massive amount of them at once, just in their small, um, you know, tabletop size. And so I downloaded a 10 of them, but I doubled them. So it was actually 20 models, which filled up most of the build plate. I think I could have probably fit a few more on there, but I just wanted to see how this would go, I was fairly optimistic. And um, again, I rotated them all, added supports, and uh, I hit print. And in just under four hours, I had a small army of goblins and hobgoblins that, again, they all looked absolutely amazing. And I probably need to invest in a macro lens for some of these resin prints because you just, I can't pick up all the detail, but there are there is so much detail in this, um, it, it, you know, that this machine was able to capture and that the model had uh, designed into these parts, I was just absolutely blown away. And for someone that is into tabletop gaming or anything like that, like, I mean, the ability to print out just a full tray of 20 minis in four hours is insane. MZ4250 is a miniature tabletop mini designing wizard and the Epax 5K had absolutely no problem capturing all of those awesome details. For a final print, I wanted to do something larger and while I was looking for an architectural model, I stumbled across the Desert's Kiss model from Ars Moriendi 3D. Now this is actually a model that I've seen printed out quite a few times over on Twitter on FDM printers and it can be either just a standalone kind of cool wicked looking display piece with the skull and uh, skull and bones and like tarantula spider or it actually works as a dice tower where you can put the dice in the skull's eyes and it kind of like rolls down the mouth which is which is crazy cool and so i saw this and um knew that i absolutely had to print it because quite a few times when i had seen the prints over on twitter i just instantly fell in love with this thing so i, I went ahead and downloaded the model into uh, Chichi box and originally I just sliced it um, as is and it was going it was telling me it was going to need 700 milliliters of resin which was absolutely insane so I did end up hollowing this out which brought it down to 350 milliliters which is still quite a bit of resin but I mean half of what it would have taken solid so definitely when you're printing large models hollowing is going to be the way to go if at all possible. Waking up the next morning, I almost felt like a kid on Christmas when I ran out of the room and I saw this skull just hanging there from the build plate looking just absolutely amazing. If you're looking for just a wicked cool model to print out, again, links will be down below in the description. And the Apex did just a fantastic job of capturing every single little detail that was in this model. And looking at the model, it is nearly perfect, but I did notice that on the inside of the mouth, there's actually a crack where there shouldn't be. This is very likely due to me not having drain holes in the base. I did include two in the back of the head, but I didn't actually realize there was a separate hollow cavity down below. And so what I think happened was from the printing process of the resin hardening, there actually, it looks to me like it's some sort of a stress fracture. And so typically on larger resin 3D printers, um, they recommend having a certain amount of drain holes for large prints, especially if they're hollow, because it helps if there is any sort of um, uh, flexing or the part uh, shrinking or, or expanding, it helps to prevent any sort of those fractures. But 
It is hidden in the mouth and it is actually next to a split that's supposed to be there because of the model so you can hardly tell. And again, the rest of the model just turned out absolutely perfect. My time with the Epax E10 5K so far has been an absolute treat. I did have pretty high expectations going into <laughs> reviewing this printer just because of the things I'd seen over on uh, one Uncle Jesse's channel and a couple of my buddies that have used Epax machines in the past have always told me such positive things. So I was hoping that my experience was going to be the same and I am happy to announce that yes, indeed, it has been an absolutely awesome experience. I did want to give a shout out to my buddy Daryl from Off Earth. He actually has the Epax E10 4K and is going to be upgrading to the 5K. And he let me know a little bit of information regarding the LCD screens and the different uh, sizes of build volume that you get with those different build plates. So uh, if you want to check out his content, I will link you guys below to his Twitter and his YouTube channel. He does some insane, uh, if you're into props or cosplay, he is an absolute also wizard um, when it comes to post-processing and painting techniques and things like that. So again, huge thank you to you for that information because that was super useful. From build quality to high resolution prints and native integration into Chitubox, thank you very much. The Epax E10 4K or 5K variant is a rock solid printer. And although Epax, these machines are not made here in the United States, their headquarters or their office at least is here in the United States. And so if you need you know, things like support or you need to get spares, replacement parts, extras, anything like that, it should be much easier. And it's definitely, in my opinion, a plus. When covering machines, I do my absolute best to cover the pros as well as the cons. And with the E10, there is really not very much that I am not an absolute fan of. There are two recommendations or two things that I would like to see integrated at some point or I think would be cool in the future. And the first of those things is going to be carbon filters. That's something that we're starting to see on resin 3D printers. And although Epax's resin isn't exactly stinky and I typically try to use as low odor resin as possible because I'm in such a small space. I know many of you guys using resin printers are in a small space. Having carbon filters can really help to eliminate some of the odor from the resins that are a bit stinkier. So that'd be my first thing I'd like to see. And then the second thing is, is that for the size of this machine, the LCD screen on the front, which I think is roughly three inches, give or take, it's a little bit small. It's no problem, like it's no problem to use our interface with the machine, but I do think that uh, as screens are getting bigger and bigger, I, I like the idea of having a bigger LCD screen. So I don't think it would hurt to have a like five inch LCD screen on this instead of the three inch LCD screen. Definitely a minor thing because, you know, again, you're primarily just using this thing to hit print on your files, but um, also something I would like to see. And then the last thing is just the lack of the user manual. However, that is something that I've already stated they are addressing. And you know, if you do decide to go with one of these machines, you should have all of that information available before you get your printer. Currently, Epax has the E10 4K for $699, as well as the E10 4K with that 5K upgrade for $1198 on their website. If you do go with the 5K upgrade, you'll get the 4K machine right away and the 5K upgrade kit will be sent after it's supposed to be shipping in the next month here. If you do plan on ordering either variant of the Epax E10, they did provide me with a 10% off coupon code. The coupon code is just modbot. I can also go ahead and either like pin a comment or put that in the description of this video. But if you are interested in purchasing either of those two, again, it will take a little bit off of the machine and also will help out the channel. Even if you feel like the 5K version is kind of overkill right now for your personal needs or maybe a little bit too expensive, it is really nice to know that if you go with the 4K version and decide later on that you do want to upgrade to get the bigger build volume and the high resolution, you can certainly do so. And I'm really hoping this is something we start to see uh, implemented more into resin printers. The ability to take your machine and just kind of upgrade it as generations go is something that I personally am an absolute fan of. And that is the Epax E10. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all about anything that I covered or maybe I didn't cover, let me know in the comments down below. And if I don't have the answer, I have no problem reaching out to the Epax team and seeing if I can get those answers for you guys. And if you are using an Epax printer or have been using an Epax printer, also let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been like. I'd love to hear from um, other users that have been using the Epax machines. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. 
Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to come back every single week, spending more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.